Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin Pierre, and on today's episode, we've got something rather quite special. Now, you'll notice that I'm wearing my Aquavite garb today. We're going to be covering a independently bottled release from my good friend Roy at Aquavite. Now, a lot of you who would have seen the title and the thumbnail for this would have already recognised this bottle. Most of you will probably have this in hand already, or maybe you are one of the unlucky people who missed out on this. But you may be asking why it's taken me so long to cover this. This came out earlier on this year and sold out on the same day it was released pretty much. Um, luckily, I managed to get a bottle. I'm a patron subscriber of Roy's, so I managed to get a heads up about this, and I'm sure many of you were as well. And I put it to the back of my cabinet because it sold out so quickly. One of the things I like to do on this channel is cover things that I know that at least some of you will be able to get. Maybe not everywhere in the world. I know I'm guilty of covering bottles that I can readily get here in the UK and some guys in the US and further afield can't get hold of those bottles. So I thought to myself that no one would be really interested in my opinions on this thing because you can't get it. Didn't really get that people would just like to know what I think of it. And I got some feedback recently that said, I just want to hear what you think of it. So here I am covering this thing. So I'd like to invite everyone who's got a bottle of this still. I think a few of you have killed your bottles already. But if you've got a bottle of this still, I invite you to pause the video, go and pour a dram and drink along with me. And unfortunately, if you haven't got a bottle of this, then um, I can only apologise for covering yet another bottle that you can't get hold of uh, at all. Um, please don't go on to secondary markets. We don't support that sort of thing. I don't, at least. I shouldn't say we. I don't support that kind of thing. But um, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy drinking along with me anyway with whatever you've got in your hand. Any kind of Loch Lomond or similar will do, of course. Enough of that wittering on then. Let's get into the actual bottle and see what we've got because, as I said earlier, this is quite special. Obviously an independently bottled release from Roy Aquavite and we have a Loch Lomond 10 year old 2011 distilled. Now there's lots of information on this label um, and as, as you can expect from someone like Roy, you know, complete transparency in its makeup. Um, a few key pieces of information then. So again, distilled in 2011, bottled in 2022. So that makes it a 10 year old Loch Lomond. This is a single cask release, cask strength, natural coloured, all the things we like. Um, if you care, it came from cask number 735, and it's one of 250 bottles. So it's a cask strength at 54.9%. You can see it's a fairly light in colour, but we'll get into that a bit later on. Um, it's also an interestingly uh, made whisky because they used Chardonnay yeast in the fermentation process, and then, of course, aged it in a first fill expert barrel. Now... Um, one of the things I do on the channel is I very rarely even bother looking at the back of labels or anything like that because I find marketing gumph a little bit too much for me. You know, I've already got the bottle in hand, so I don't need to read all of the stuff at the back. But I'm very glad that I did check out the back of this label because there's some awesome artwork on the back here. Hopefully that comes through nicely for you. That was done by Shayla, who uh, you know somewhat humbly says here, a bar fly Shayla, but of course Shayla runs her own whiskey tube channel called Whiskey Central and has occasionally covered for the VPUB for Roy, like myself. So yeah, definitely go and check out Shayla. She does a really awesome channel and some really good artwork there as well. And it's a real nice touch of Roy's to include that on the back. And for hers to have made it in the first place, yeah. And again, massively humble for just calling herself a bar fly when she has her own channel. In any case then, let's get onto the actual whiskey, see what we've got in the glass. Of course, full garb today, so we've got the Aquavite glass in hand as well. Nice kind of light, you know, I know they said Chardonnay on the, uh, on the, on the yeast, but it is a kind of like a white winey, deep, like, you know, deeper white wine looking colour. Looks nice enough. Let's get onto the nose and see what we've got. Now for me, the nose doesn't initially sort of portray that ABV. But that might just be my kind of like seasoned palate, I guess. I'm kind of used to high ABV whiskies now, so I'm not too worried about sticking my old schnoz into a, a tasting glass. But for me, this is kind of like, although we're talking a Highland distillery here, it portrays the kind of like notes that I would expect to get from a space side. If I'm looking for indicative flavours, whatever they are these days, traditional <laughs> kind of regional flavours. Lots of vanilla, lots of fresh orchard fruits, 
And for me, caramelised sugar. So we're kind of like, you know, I know it's a bit of a, a, a kind of an age old trope, but that kind of like creme brulee vibe on the nose. Nice. Let's get onto the palette. Mm. For me, this is where this is where this dram sings. I mean, forget the nose not portraying the ABV. It's coming across in heaps on the palette. I've kind of called it a bit of a heat and sweet element. So at the start, we're getting that kind of big ABV hit that comes with a load of peppery spiciness. Then comes a little bit of sweetness that really cuts through that ABV nicely. So it's not like the ABVs are like overrunning the show or anything like that. You just get that initial hit. Then you're getting that sweetness come through and it's more of that stuff you've got on the nose you know those vanillas those sugars those orchard fruits that sort of thing the finish let's have another sip first mm -hmm. the finish is long spicy sweet and fruity at the at the front end but starts to sour out about now it's kind of live finishing it starts to sour out a little bit and you get kind of an idea of the cask at the back end, but as I found out through my tasting of this, sour notes on the back end of a finish is only good because it makes the next sip of the dram all the more sweeter, especially if it's something like this. So yeah, for me, obviously I'm loving this dram. You can see I haven't really tapped into it much. I managed to hide it away from myself. And again, you know, this one's gonna go onto the kind of special cabinet, like back here behind the guard whiskies, so that I don't touch it very often because as I said earlier, this one's sold out. You're not going to see this one ever again. Um, hopefully, Roy will do more independent bottles because it's taken him long enough to do this. You, uh, you know, if you watch Roy, and I'd be surprised if you don't, that he's uh, meticulous in his choices. So this is this has taken him a while to uh, to get this one figured out. So hopefully, he's working on something else, especially after the resounding success of this, and learning points for people like myself who have dabbled in independent bottling as well is to find a shop that will ship internationally and that's something I'll be doing in the future for sure. Now one of the things I obviously talk about on the show is um, cost, value, that sort of thing. And I'll go into that a little bit here because this was fairly expensive, uh, including shipping to me in the UK this was about £75. I imagine you paid a lot more than me if you got this shipped abroad. And for the cost versus experience it's probably a little bit high for me but I caveat that with the fact that obviously this is an independently bottled whiskey by a whiskey tuber at I imagine I don't know this for sure but I imagine very 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 little uh, above cost price so it's same as me you know I've dabbled in my independent bottles as well um, I pretty much without getting into too much of it pretty much made absolutely no money at all on those whiskies because it's so 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 expensive to bottle in this low quantity if you're not already the producer you know, it's got to go through several different hands. Everyone's got to have their little slice of things, you know, right down from the, the bottles, the labels, the, the liveries, the tubes, the shop, the distillery, the government, all these people need their little slice. And to get these into your hands for a reasonable price, I imagine Roy took a big hit on that, um, same as me. So I'm certainly not bashing him for the price of it because it's. Uh, it, I know how expensive it is to do this, but if we're just looking at the experience versus the cost, Probably just a little bit high, but you know what? I would do it again in a heartbeat if Roy released another one of these because I support Roy. I want to support him throughout his whiskey career. And hopefully, as people like me and him get a bit larger, we can start getting the prices down on bottles and getting you those best deals because that's what I'm all about as well. You know, I'm not in about it to make money off of these things, so, and I don't think Roy is either. Anyway, roundabout. This is an excellent dram and I know you've all enjoyed this. Hopefully you've been drinking along with me and you've still got a bit left. Uh, if you haven't and you've got a sealed bottle, please open it because you'd be remiss for missing out on something like this. So I'm going to enjoy the rest of my jam. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my bottle and bring this along to some meetups in the future. So hopefully you'll see me with this in my hand and you can get to try a bit if you missed out. Cheers. See you again soon.